You know, when God gives you a promise, you've got a responsibility of preparing for it. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. God can change you from within. The identity you have in Christ gets released. When Christ comes in you, the genetics of the blood of Jesus begins to function. This is where the power of God takes over. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. Some reason to thank God. Thank God for your spouse. I'm unmarried. Thank God for yourself. Thank God for your spouse if you're married. Start a journal. Every day find something new that you want to thank God for your spouse. People are different. So resolving differences, divisions, requires us to stand in each other's shoes and look at it in the same perspective. And therefore, we must take time to appreciate our differences. Agree with one another, communicate, listen to each other, talk to each other, harmonize with one another. Family life is built on obedience to the word of God. In Christ, when you follow his word, something is going to follow you. It's going to follow you. Surely, goodness and mercy is going to follow you all. All the days, good day, bad day, in October, now, it doesn't matter. Every day, two things are going to follow. God's mercy and God's goodness. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are glad to be here in the house of God to praise and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give him an offering of praise. Hallelujah. He alone deserves all glory, all honor. Amen. Every day we live for his glory, for his honor. Amen. Let's read that scripture portion. I want to welcome all of you that are participating online, worshiping God with us. I believe the Lord is going to bless you as you worship and as you attend the service with us. Let's read that verses together. Psalm 145, 1 to 6, loud and clear. Here we go. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. 
great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness hallelujah this morning Lord we want to thank you we want to thank you we want to thank you Heavenly Father we thank you Lord God for this blessed time and with Lord we've come here together to declare your greatness and Lord to tell that we will praise you all the days of our lives and every moment of our life Lord we commit we surrender that we will Lord bring thanks that we will bring praise to your holy name that our lips shall praise you father God and this morning as we come together Lord from different places different backgrounds and as people have joined online worshiping you from different parts of the world I pray that the same Holy Spirit that is present here will also bless everyone Lord God that is connected today we believe Lord God that your Holy Spirit is at work and we believe that lives are going to be transformed we thank you for the power of your word we thank you for the power oh Lord God of the Holy Spirit that is at work in this place we believe oh father God that miracles are going to be seen miracles are going to be happening here in this place as we listen to your word as we worship I pray that heavens open doors oh Lord God will pour out the choicest blessings that you have kept in store for your people help us to draw closer to you in worship thank you Lord for your word that will bless and change and transform lives thank you for every prayers that you answer in Jesus most holy and matchless name we pray and everyone say amen amen oh we praise you Jesus come on hallelujah praise the Lord what joy it brings us to come into the house of God amen let's put our hands together give our highest praises to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords come on what to say Lord it's you who gave me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now that you have saved me Lord I give all that
because of the cross of Jesus that has spoken mercy over our lives. And this morning we're going to worship and say, Lord God, thank you for that wonderful love, that amazing love. All glory to him. Let's worship him. Wonderful soul your unfailing love, your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could fully know. How glorious, how beautiful. Jesus. 
You opened my eyes to your wonders and you You've captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Let's sing that You opened my eyes to your wonders and you You've captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful Open my eyes to your wonders and you You've captured my heart with this love There's nothing on earth is as beautiful as you becomes beautiful because his beauty flows in our lives amen and in, in every valley in every mountain he's a God who says that he will never leave us nor forsake us not even for a minute amen and we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit this morning and say God flood our hearts with your love that we will overflow with your love in every circumstances of our lives that we will show Christ's love. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. Come and fill our hearts with your love. Can go back to the beginning can't control what tomorrow may bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promised to be Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? Shine it our lives, Jesus. As I walk through the valley, let 
still going live. Yeah.
Father, we thank you because you are here in this place. And Lord, without you, we are nothing. Come Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. Amen. God bless us. Let's welcome our dear pastor. <coughs> Amen. Shall we do the confessions together? I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today as I learn the word of God, here in my spiritual family, I am blessed, healed and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus name, Amen. The Lord bless us. Please be seated. <coughs> A quick update for all of us here and for those who are participating online. The disruption was because we use a 500 kVA generator to satisfy all the electrical energy requirements of the church on a Sunday morning. And for some reason today the generator is pretty moved off. I don't know why. <laughs> well, we know that power has no feelings. But some people believe that it's some power that controls everything. No, power has no feelings. It is God who created everything. But generator is uh, misbehaving in our language for, for some reason. And we are right now on the BESCOM. So, I mean, the regular electrical power supply. Therefore, all systems are not working, only essential systems are working at the moment for uh, probably for today until we know why the generator had failed and uh, maybe we'll have to buy a new one, I don't know, but that's for them to decide. Okay, <clears throat> uh, it was so nice to see the way Everyone started praying when the electricity went off. You know. I, I've always seen that, you know. I've always seen that whenever something goes amiss, the best in people come out. You know. <laughs> really, in the church, whenever there's a situation, people's best character comes out, you know. Their best attitude comes out, and that's so beautiful. And that's so beautiful because usually in the society when something goes wrong, people's bad character comes out. But in the church, it's the just opposite, you know. It's, it's really beautiful, so beautiful. Amen. Pandemic, of course, was a very, very difficult... Okay, official, i am started preaching now. <laughs> Pandemic was really a difficult season because most people, you know, they lost... Either they lost somebody that they really loved or they lost opportunities in life, or they lost money because of the situations that changed, or they just lost time in life, whether it's career, education, marriage. As a pastor, I know many marriages that fell apart uh, and could not happen because of the unpredictable delays and just didn't work out. And many people lost friendships, relationships, so, yes, the last two, three years have been time of pain, of difficulty, the famous word lockdown. But I, I want to encourage all of us, get back to church, get back to friendships, get back to growing together, get back because times are changing for good and you want to be a part of what God is doing. <clears throat> don't live in the past get a hang of the future and move with God's people in success and in victory amen 
So uh, the, today I want to learn about what the Bible says to us about friendships. Does the Bible talk about friendships? Today I'm going to give you eight scriptures. Now that's a lot because usually on an average Sunday I do about two to three scriptures. So we'll have to run through this to get a hang of it. But today I want to deal with the concept of friendships. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26, the righteous... Okay, whenever you see a scripture on the screen, just read it out loud with me, okay? Let's do that. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them. You know, it's very important that we be wise. God wants us to be wise. We all pray for anointing, and I think that's very important, but not without wisdom. God wants us to be wise in everything. All right. He wants us to be careful. Why? Because friendships are at least two types. One is what I call seasonal friendships that might last for a few months. It might last for a few years, sometimes more than a decade. Now that's called seasonal friendships. It is occupational and seasonal. They, and it's generally made of this. They look, think, even vote, worship, or even dress, sometimes behave or even eat like you. But they are not attracted to you. They are attracted to your gifts and your looks and what you do. And sometimes we are confused with, oh, they like me. <laughs> they didn't like you. They liked what you have. <laughs> Some people become friends with us just because they like what we like and they also hate what we hate. And please don't mistake them to be committed to you. They probably have a similar dream like you have for yourself. But they have no commitment to you. Just that it looks like you have much in common. They are not for you. But they are for what you believe in. They are for where you're going. You got into the bus, somebody else got into the bus. Why are you together? Because you're going in the same direction. Sometimes friendships happen in life because we are in the same direction. Fellowship is nothing but two fellows in the same ship. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's a friendship for a long time. Don't pick up short-term occasional friends and make long-term eternal commitments. Because what happens is, when time comes, they will leave you for somebody who helps their belief and their cause or their journey in a better way. They may use you and throw you, or at least that's how you will feel at the end of it. Because some friendships, may I say most friendships, we all like maths numbers, so shall I say 99% of friendships oh, are seasonal are occasional. A majority of friendships are seasonal, are occasional. Now some friendships are long-term, they are lifetime. And I'm not including marriage in this, I'm talking only about friendship. Some friendships are long-term. If you have two or three long-term friends for life, Count yourself blessed. That's reality. About two generations ago, if you had 10 friends for a lifetime, you could count yourself blessed. Today, if you've got two, you're blessed. Because the world has changed. But you need them to be who God called you to be, where you can share your dreams with them. But be very careful with long-term or short-term friendships that you don't allow them to control you. You let God, the Holy Spirit, control you. Amen. Friendships are very, imp you keep clapping when you want, I'll keep preaching, I have to finish. Friendships are very important, not only for the sake of friendship, but for the reality that without friendship, our mental health will get affected. Mental health is so important, and friendships are very important for mental well-being. 
United States of America, last year, their uh, statistical records given by their medical, American Medical Association, one in five adults experience mental illness and in one out of every 20 adults are in serious mental hazard, are seriously mentally sick on prescription drugs. One in six American youths, now about India, I don't have statistical records, but the others have published it. One in every six American youths between the age of six years to 17 years, because of their lifestyle of individualism, including people who immigrate there. Experience mental disorder because of loneliness, lifestyle. Lack of friends is the main reason. In India, things are not so bad because culturally, friendship is respected in India. You'll be surprised, I was. Suicide is the number two leading reason for death among people aged 10 years to 24 years in the United States of America. Suicide is the second leading national pandemic of United States of America within that age group because of mental struggles. We're not dealing with a small issue. We're dealing with the serious stuff. Friendships are important and they affect our lifestyle. And the Bible has a lot to talk about it. I need a month to finish this, at least to feel satisfied. And I've got 30 minutes. Why people become friends? This is social science. They become friends because they they feel somebody expressing trustworthiness through their support systems and comfort. And, and when you feel somebody is trustworthy, you, you usually become friendly with them. Something funny happened to me last week. I had to take an auto rickshaw for whatever reason from Lal Bagh back to uh, my house via the church. And I got into the auto and the guy says, where are you going? I said, my house. And he says to me, where is your house? I said, I'll tell you, let's go. He said, first tell me. Because I know Bangalore auto. <laughs> I said, chalo man, let's go. He said, yeah. Where is your house? I said, Hebal. He said, Hebal, it's going to cost X amount. I said, boss, we'll talk on the way you start. He said, it'll cost X amount. Now, I thought he's asking a little extra, but I thought it's okay, you know. I said, Chalo, let's go. Because I know when he said Hebal, he meant the flyover. When I said Hebal, I meant three more kilometers inside. <laughs> so I had a feeling that money is sort of justified because he won't get a ride back from my house. So my fear was after Hebal, will he charge more? That was my doubt. So I told him, listen, now that we agreed on a price, put the meter, I want to check. He said, what? I said, I want to check your prediction. You said it's going to be X amount. Let's see how much it's going to cost. But anyway, I'll pay you what I promised you. So he turned on. Now from his apparel, his dressing, I knew he belonged to a certain community. And so and he's a talkative guy for some reason. He started talking about the other vehicles, drivers. And uh, I was enjoying my auto drive. In fact, I took a selfie in the auto. <laughs> I do that sometimes, sitting on a bus or auto or wherever. I take a selfie, <laughs> except aircrafts. <clears throat> so, so boring, aircraft. So, <laughs> we got talking and, and he started asking me questions and then he got into politics. A few minutes of talking, we reached, not few minutes, about half an hour of talking or a little more, we reached Hebal flyover and he said, now where? I said, keep going. And I, I kept telling him left, right, left, right, right, another right, left, another left. And to my amazement, he didn't ask for anything extra. When I got down and I didn't have change, I said, give me a minute, I'll go home, pick up the change for you. And when I came back, he says to me, I enjoy talking to you. You are so supportive. For me, I saved money. But, 
But the fact is, we become friends simply by feeling supportive, simply by a sense of trustworthiness. I mean, I didn't say anything extra to him. I was just who I am usually with anybody. I speak from my heart. I speak frankly. And the guy felt so supported. He felt so nice about it. Honestly, I was getting irritated. So much of talking, my goodness. But I'm so used to listening. So I kept responding. And in between, he would look through the mirror. And I would say, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Go on. <laughs> but, but I saved some money. People become friends because when, when they tend to see that the other person is listening to you and they participate emotionally with you in a, in a, in a situation where uh, you are able to freely express yourself and you know there is confidentiality, there is privacy, all of a sudden you feel, what I can't tell my parents, what I can't tell my spouse, or oh, I'm able to tell my friend. And there is a level of friendship that grows in that relationship. And it's not bad. That's not bad. But if there is a control, if there is a change of attitude that develops in that relationship where it affects you negatively and you don't even know about it, then that's dangerous. Friendships happen because people discuss common interests, sometimes differing interests, but they discuss mutual things and, and, and they reciprocate normalizing experience. <gasps> Last night I was scared. And the other one says, daytime I got scared. And they normalize each other's experience. And so there is a friendship that is built around that <laughs> because of validation of experiences. As a pastor's son, I become friends quick. At least I used to become friends quickly with other pastor's kids because I know what they've gone through. We've grown up in a glass house. You know, we've almost felt like a goldfish in an aquarium. Everybody gets to comment on you. Everybody gets to know what you're doing. Everybody has an opinion on what you should eat and what you should wear because you live not really in a house, but in a pastor's house, which is more like a bus stand that people keep coming and going. And, uh, and I quickly connect because of normalization of experiences. We become friends because they make us feel positive. They make us feel safe. They make us feel important. They make us feel valued. And the most important, I think, is they make us feel original. We can be who we want to be with them. And they forgive quickly. And they enjoy your presence without any prejudice. Is that the reason some people say man's best friends are dogs? But what breaks friendships? <laughs> small, small misunderstandings, sometimes big, big misunderstandings. These are things that break friendships. And these misunderstandings usually happen because of poor communication or poor manners or poor habits. And it's left unattended and it starts hurting. Another reason for breakup of friendships is changed or hidden priorities. A changed or hidden desires, changed or hidden plans, plans that were not revealed. Sometimes it's purely because there's no time to keep friendship. You're so busy with life. Sometimes friendships break because there are unfulfilled expectations. And this is really sad. Unfulfilled expectations. You had some expectation out of that friendship, but after 10 years, after 8 years, after 15 years, after 3 years, after 6 months, you begin to feel that expectation is not happening and you feel so let down. Sometimes they portray false hopes and you really believed it and you're now you're hurt. Friendships break because of absolute betrayal, sabotage, straight cheating, sometimes wrong desires where you invest more into them and when it came their time to return the investment, they are not having any, any attitude of returning the favor either emotionally or spiritually or physically or financially. You've invested so much into them and they do nothing back as you hoped. It breaks friendships. 
And simple reason why friendships break is because people change when money comes into their hand or goes out of their hand. People change when their time factors have changed. People change when their place, their location has changed, including the location where they sit on the desk in the office. Or if the location changed from where they sit in the classroom, friendship changes or stress changes people or opportunities of life change people and therefore friendships change. <laughs> Why should we be careful with friendships? Number one, <clears throat> you should be sensitive to friendships and be careful about friendships. Hey, are you all listening today? This room has become so quiet. <clears throat> Is anybody benefiting? Okay. You should be sensitive and discern your friendships. Why? Because sometimes your friend actually stopped being your friend. Now it's just a relationship. And you don't even understood it. Especially after some time of friendship. Maybe they stopped being your friend. They're just there. They're not a friend anymore. And you're treating them as a friend. But they're just another acquaintance. Just another relationship. Just another person you know. Not really friend. Sometimes they want you to do things that are not good for you. That's the time to be very careful. Whether it is immoral stuff like they want you to participate in a party with alcohol or smoke. Or they want to take you out for something that is not comfortable in your spirit. Or they want a sexual relationship. Or they want you to do something that you know is not appropriate for you. Watch out. That person no longer is your friend, behaves like a friend, but is not a friend. He's just in other relationships with another agenda. Sometimes you've got to be very careful about friendships when they make social demands on you. Social demands like they want you to move away from your faith or they want to move away. They want you to move away from your family. They want you to stop respecting your parents or they want you to stop the commitment you have to your family, to your spouse, careful. Be careful with friendships when they make a demand on your time, your talents and your treasures, especially money, without the willingness to document it. Hey, can't you trust me? I'm your friend. Just give me some money now. Why do you want to document it? No, no, let me check with the lawyer. Let me check with the uh, chartered accountant. Why do you have to check? Can't you trust me? That's a friendship you want to be very careful about. They may not mean to cheat you, but chances are you will end up being cheated because things change in life. So how do you medicate friendships? How do you handle friendships, especially when they are toxic? <laughs> especially when there is jealousy and you know this person is jealous and when you know there is hatred or you know there is anger, sometimes there is fear. Sometimes it's just negative. You, you, if you are with some people, you not only have to have a wash after that, you need to wash your clothes after that. There's so much negativity. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company, not, not bad in stock market. Relationships, bad friendships, that's company. Bad company ruins good morals and the bible says it so what if he's a druggy i know how to handle myself hey boss bible says there is a chance that influence will come on you and today psychiatrists tell us psychiatrists brain doctors tell us habitual habit doctors tell us that you are really the best of the five good friends you have the five good friends that you have, kind of getting influenced by them strongly. How do you handle and medicate friendships? How do you treat friendships? <laughs> Some friendships are transactional. You give, I give. You don't give, I don't give. What I call the classic Donald Trump kind of friendships. Deal makers. Don't do covenant with them. Don't say, I'll be your best friend for life. They're not covenant people. They're contract people. Marriage is a covenant. Friendships are contracts. Boss, the fellows who sang that fought so many times. <laughs> they fought in the court. 
They were in the Indian judiciary over rights over the film and so many other things. They sang, but they kept fighting. <laughs> so, transactional friendships. <laughs> and in such, don't allow the leech category. They keep depending on you for everything. And don't allow the crutch category where they make you depend on them. They call it the leech and the crutch. These are all my language. Some of you have so much experience with these, you can give it better names, but it's the same problem. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to... Hey, listen, be very careful of friendships because they have an unusual impact on your life. You got to be careful with friendships because some of them are simple, immoral. They deviate you from your commitment to God. They impact your purity of life. They disturb your disciplines. Sometimes they just wreck your family, your relationships with your larger family. James chapter 4, the Bible says, you're cheating on God if all you want is your own way. Flirting, oh, look at the language. Flirting with the world, world means friends in the world. Every chance you get, you end up enemies of God. Let's read that again. You're cheating on God if all you want is your own way. Flirting. With the world, every chance you get, you end up enemies of God and His ways. Everybody here needs friends. Do not be lonely. You must have friends. But a wise man chooses friends carefully. When we got married, the first thing I told my wife was this. You will never have a best friend in the church. She was shocked. She's a woman of strong relationships. And I figured that out. So I told her, you'll never have best friends in the church. And she said, what? I said, everyone in the church will be your best friend. That's the only way you can be my wife. Or you can't handle that position. She didn't understand it then, but she said, all right. I'll obey what you say. And these days, she doesn't tell me much, but I know she appreciates my idea. <laughs> Because in the place that we are, we just, it's not right for us to have somebody as best friend and somebody else as a secondary friend. God has put us here to serve everybody with love. And so we, we cannot afford that. It's just not right for us. And, and today she says, you know, so many heartaches are avoided just by that one principle. You love everybody, honor everybody, and and. But, but that's not true for everyone now. In your, among your colleagues, in your place of work, in your neighborhood, in your uh, university, you can have best friends. That's not wrong. That's not wrong. That's not unfair. For me, it would be unfair because God has put me in a place where I need to be careful about how I honor everybody. So how do we handle communication in friendships? Number one. <laughs> But let's read the scripture. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Walk with the wise. Aha. Uh -huh. Because a companion of. See, some foolish friends are sincere. They are honest. But they are still foolish. And therefore you will suffer harm. Not because they mean bad for you. But just because they are not wise enough. Don't take their advices. I just got mad. How many stories I've heard. I just got married. I'm in big trouble with my husband. I just got married. I'm in big trouble with my wife. I'm in big trouble with my in-laws. Why? Actually, my friends advised me. Oh my God, how many times? And so many times when I asked them, who is your friend? So and so. They work with me. They studied with me. Are, are they married? Yeah. Are they having a good family life? No, actually, they are also separated. Then why... <coughs> Please don't buy hair oil from a bald man. <laughs> That's not a Chinese proverb. <laughs> How to handle good communication? Don't promise what you can't keep, even among friends. Hey, I'll do that for you. 
Think through before you commit. And, and don't calculate what they can do for you. Always calculate what you can do for them and your own expectations that you have for yourself towards them. That way, problem will be very less. Don't give them the power to validate you. Have a self-esteem of good health. Have a healthy self-esteem. The other day I told my wife, you look beautiful. She said, I know that. <laughs> said, okay. But I thought, that's nice. It's good to have that self-confidence. You don't need somebody to say, you smell nice today. Suddenly you feel so beautiful. You feel like a rose in the garden. <laughs> and then he calls you to the garden cafe. You're already gone. You've forgotten your values. You've forgotten your decisions. Why? Because you allow others to validate you. Have a good self-esteem about yourself. And so when people appreciate you, you're able to take it in the right way. And when people critique you, you're able to put it in the right box, usually the junk box. <laughs> Discern their intentions when you communicate. Don't just believe what they show you or what they say to you. Go behind into their intentions. Be like, how many want to be like Jesus? Oh, so encouraging. How many want to be like Jesus? Raise your right hand, left hand. If both hands are not working, one leg you lift up. Okay, now let's read that scripture. John chapter 2 verse 24. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them because love God, trust God. Love people, period, enough. I didn't say trust people. I said love God, trust God. When it comes to people, love people. Stop at that. Sometimes you have to trust, there's no doubt, but then, you know, you have to be wise when you trust. Now, you can't doubt everybody. You have to trust people, but then your trust has to be wise trust. It cannot be a foolish trust. Avoid gossip and communication as a rule. When you are talking, you want to really talk bad, my point is, talk about some politician. <laughs> of any party. Don't talk gossip about common friends. Because the day you talk disrespectfully about the person who is absent, you have not realized it, but you have already lost the respect of those who are present. Because they know when they are not there, you will talk about them also. <laughs> Avoid gossip as a rule. Don't talk about others. Just avoid that. If you want to appreciate, that's okay. But negative, don't. Now, sometimes for administrative reasons, you may have to. In your, in your office, you may have to tell the HR or your boss something that you have to say. Now, that's a different story. That's not gossip. That's reporting. But gossip, avoid. <sighs> Rules of communication. A good friend does not necessarily make a good business partner. Sometimes maybe... Sometimes may not be. Does not make a good partner in something unique. Check their ability. Friendship is not enough. Their loyalty is not enough. Their technicality is very important. These are all things that I keep praying about. So I included all that in the message. Because these are, you know, oh, we together bought a property. Does your friend know how to buy a property? Does he have advocates who know how to look into papers? Not every advocate knows how to look into paper. There are good advocates who know about land deals. They know how to do land deals. There are some other lawyers who are good with crime. They know how to handle a crime. You know, there are some other lawyers who are good with company policies. That's their expertise. Don't catch a company policy expert. Oh, he's a good friend. He'll do land deal. Bosh. I don't want to say more. Check their ability. And it's not wrong, it's not, it's not wrong to tell your friend that, hey, since you and I am not good on the job, let's go to somebody who's good on the job. That's not wrong. But have the wisdom to do that. Don't get emotional and skip that. Men and women are very different in friendship. Men and women are very different in friendships. Women, you better understand how men are in their friendships. And men, please understand how women are in friendships. In friendship zone, women are usually emotional and men are usually transactional. Mm -hmm. 
Women usually talk more, touch more, patting, tapping, holding hands, sharing details of feelings. Men are more activity based. That's my badminton friend. He doesn't mix with my table tennis friend. And he doesn't mix with my coffee friend. And that fellow doesn't mix with my colleague in the office friend. So all different compartments. Now in some cases they do mix, but usually men are more transactional. They're activity based. And they don't discuss intimate personal details. They, they, women say because it makes them feel good. Men say because they know it makes the other person feel good to hear. <laughs> Men, the reason she's talking to you everything about herself is not because you feel good or bad. That's not the issue. She feels good when she's talking. And lady, when she tells you anything personal, it's not because he's feeling good, it's because he noticed he are feeling good. And so he's giving you more and more and more. And after marriage, no, he doesn't talk because he got you. Most boyfriends after marriage won't do anything to keep the girl of what they did to get the girl. <coughs> That's a revelation for some of you, I know. You're ready to put an offering, right? Yeah, let's go on. <laughs> so how do you, are you learning something here? How do you handle friendships? There's so much in the Bible about handling opposite sex, but yeah, opposite sex. Because same sex is completely wrong when it comes to romance. The Bible says it is sin and therefore it is. Don't write down your own textbook and follow it as God's word. Read Bible, which is God's textbook, and follow that. How do you handle opposite sex? Very simple. In friendships with the opposite sex, the Bible says, be respectful and be appropriate. As simple as that. And it's very easy. Even before, uh, you know, I had some simple principles for my life. I will never have a lady sit with me on the bike. Those days I used to use a motorbike. I just had a principle. So many pastors in town, you know, when they go for prayer, sometimes they have to carry one uh, or they have to, uh, you know, travel with another woman in the church. And that's perfectly all right. But I took a decision. I won't do that. Simple as that. I won't do that. But it doesn't feel good. Now, in my heart, it feels normal. But in the society I live in, it doesn't feel good. I think today it doesn't matter so much. But those days, oh, it mattered a lot. So, <clears throat> yeah. I used to say, if I keep a bike, if I keep a lady on the bike, I have only one lady, but that Pentecostal hypocrite that is critiquing me, in his mind on his bike, he got three ladies. But only God sees the mind, right? So I had some simple principles and sometimes I have been in embarrassing situations where, uh, I'll tell you one story. I once went to Jalahali to pray in one house and we had to go about two kilometers away to another house for prayer. So, so the first house that I went to, um, <coughs> they had to show me the next house. And this young lady tells me, Pastor, let's go. I'll show you the next house. I don't, I don't know how to tell you, man, it was such a bad tight spot because they are so loving, so nice. How do I tell this lady I can't keep you at the back of my bike? It is so inappropriate. It is so distrusting. It is, it is a shame. You're the pastor. How can you tell such a wonderful believer? And the whole family is there saying, Pastor, let our daughter come with you. And, and I'm, this was before my marriage, but that has not changed. After marriage also, I have the same policy. So uh, my wife can travel with me. My mother can. <laughs> I don't, don't take it to an extreme. But <clears throat> I remember telling that family, said, you know, because they were like, why are you not going? They're all standing out. And I'm just standing near the bike and yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is it? How is it? Can I go alone? You can't pass the crossroads. No, just give me an idea. They're like, why don't you just go with her? She's ready. Then I told them, I said, can I go walking? So more of you can come. 
Then I told them, this is the problem, I have a decision. They laughed and they said, in today's world, this is 25 years ago, in today's world, you have a decision like that. Anyway, pastor, let's go. This is why we don't like Pentecostals. They were saying so many things. I said, yeah, yeah. We had a good time talking and cursing every Pentecostal. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> we went where we had to, we prayed, I walked back. I remember thinking, what all rules, God? See, I have to walk all the way with such a beautiful Yamaha RX 100 there. <laughs> I am walking like a fool because of my rules. <laughs> 15 years down the line, this lady is married, has a beautiful family, some problem, and her husband tells her, go to Pastor Johnson, nobody else. If you go anywhere else, I'll divorce you. Yeah, yeah. And he says, the only person you can talk to is Pastor Johnson. These are very intimate details of our personal life. He's the only one you can talk to. She comes to me and she says, Pastor, my husband doesn't know you. I know you. But I don't understand. And they go to another church after marriage. And I don't understand. He doesn't want me to talk to his pastor. He doesn't want me to go to a counselor. He says, go to Pastor Johnson. So I said, even I don't understand. Anyway, I prayed with her, heard her matter. Then later, I checked with that guy uh, indirectly. Why you send your wife to me? And he told this story. Which one? That walking one kilometer up and down. <laughs> he said, I'd rather trust my wife with a man like you because of the kind of details in the marriage. You know, even fellow, and their marriage was love marriage. It's not like that fellow is another Pentecostal, not at all. But even an average fellow knows which decisions are good for morality and which are... Now, hereafter, don't say, I will not sit behind your bike because pastor said like that. No, that's, that's not the point I'm making. I'm talking about inner convictions on handling communications and expectations with a certain level of relevance. Amen. It's easy to be respectful and appropriate. It's not difficult. You may have to walk two kilometers, but that's all right, you know. It's difficult to be too close to a person of opposite sex and keep romance out. Pastor, that man is so close to me, I'm sure he has no other intention. If his gender is male, <laughs> the minute your friendship crosses another line, there is no way that he cannot have other thoughts. Because the way God manufactured the male brain. <laughs> I know many of you are having holy hallelujahs going up, but <laughs> truth is truth. Keep your boundaries when it comes to opposite sex. <laughs> and a good friend may make a good marriage partner. But there is no guarantee. Some relationships with opposite sex is very good with those boundaries as good friend. But the day you get married, trouble starts. Because a good girlfriend doesn't make a good wife. A good boyfriend doesn't make a good husband. Some do. I was thinking of a story from the Bible. I got a good one. There was a lady called Hagar in the house of Abraham. It was such a peaceful relationship. But the day they got married, till today, family problem is going on. <laughs> 4,000 years. Ask the Syrians and the Muslims and the Jews, they'll tell you. One wrong relationship of a boyfriend, girlfriend, becoming husband, wife. Not really boyfriend, girlfriend. Abraham was the master and she was an employee in the house when employee and employer got married. <laughs> the world is paying the price. <clears throat> now, if there are any two people who are employer and employee and you got married, God is not speaking anything to you. Okay? Just maintain your marriage and be happy. Because sometimes it works out. The point is you need to check whether that person is a good spouse. Just because the person is a good boss or a good uh, pastor or a good, you know, uh, uh, whatever, good in something doesn't mean they'll make a good partner in marriage. 
when it comes to identifying a spouse in friendships, first thing, pray to God. Only God knows. Three years down the marriage, five years down the marriage, what will happen? Only He knows. So talk to Him. Abba, is this your will? Ask Him. And God is a prayer answering God. If you ask him long enough, he will answer you. But problem is don't decide something and then ask. Don't decide something in your heart and say, say yes, Lord, hallelujah. Is it your will, Lord? I know your will, Lord. Don't do all these jokes with God. When you pray, be sincere. I remember in Ganga Nagar, one Wednesday prayer I will never forget. I was laying hands on people and praying, small church that time. Wednesday we used to have prayer. I went and I prayed. One fellow is praying, God, I want to get married. You know my desire. He's praying very loud, so I, I, I had to hear. I am waiting to lay hands on him and pray, but he's just crying and praying. You know my heart's desire. I want to do your will. Only your will. But Sheila. <laughs> Sheila, Lord. It's your will, Lord. <laughs> Some of the biggest oxymorons you will hear are in prayer time. <laughs> Check for value systems. Are your value systems same? And process it right. Process a relationship right if you think it's a spouse material. For a simple job, you do multiple interviews, including Zoom, telephonic, in-person, for a one small job profile, where they don't even guarantee you a lifetime contract. Should arranged marriages or love marriages be just done in one meeting? What a risk it is. When we got married, it was a super risk. In eight minutes, I had to decide. I tell you, stress. Whew. They gave me 10 minutes and they said at 8 minutes we'll ring the bell. I had to talk to my wife at that time, you know, a marriage proposal. And I, she and I had to make a decision in that time because that's what elders had decided. Whew. People do background verification for a normal job. For a marriage of a lifetime, don't you need to do some verification background? Do some background check and value it. Don't just do background check for the sake of doing. Check what kind of person that was. Because usually people repeat themselves again and again. You can't formulate logic, expectations and reasonings from watching movies and comedies on friendships and think, oh, I know everything. It happened to me. I used to preach in weddings, conduct marriages, counsel people. I thought, I know everything about marriage. I was like, welcome, Cynthia, to the guru. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but after marriage, when the rubber hit the road, I realized, man, this is something else. Somebody once said it so right. Love is blind. Marriage wakes you up. <laughs> okay, some simple good practices in friendships. Number one, let's read. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. So speak encouraging words one to another. Build up hope so you will be together in this. No one left out. No one left behind. I know you're already doing this. Just keep on. Do How do you handle friendships? Build one another up. Be positive in your outlook. Be Christ-like in your nature. That's how you handle friendships. And if some people want to fall out, let them go. If the only way they'll be your friend is if you're bad or evil or like them, then let them go. It's all right. They can catch another bus. You have got Christ in your way. <laughs> you want to have success in your friendship? Simple things. Avoid dirty stuff. Whether it's jokes, habits, places, topics, avoid dirty stuff. Practice simple concepts of prayer together. Now, if your friend is not a Christian, then it's all right. I mean, you don't have to hurt their feelings. But if it's a Christian, do simple things like, hey, let's just pray together for a minute. Anyway, we met for coffee. 
Oh, what do we pray for? Pray for church. Pray for something. Pray for each other. It doesn't take too long. Have value-based friendships if you have common faith. Spend time meaningfully. Maintain healthy social and emotional distance. Social and emotional distance. Social distancing, now we have all understood. <laughs> Maintain that social and emotional distance. I remember once talking to my friend, I can't take his name, college days, he came on, he, used to, he was the first one who had a Yamaha RX-100 those days. In the, uh, so, you know, we all envied him. And uh, uh, <clears throat> once he comes near the college, <clears throat> you can hear that noise, you know. But one day, that noise was very less. And I remember asking him, I said, after every two minutes, he would apply break. And then another friend answered, said, Tu ne dekha. Behind him, there was a girl. And all the breaking happened because he loved her falling on him. I was thinking, a fellow who never used the brakes, how proximity changes everything. <laughs> a fellow who cannot drive slowly had to keep applying the brake, not because anybody was in danger, but because there is something called social distancing which is wise to keep. Otherwise, it might end up with unwanted breaks in life. Last verse. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you for everything that I learned from my father. I have made. Jesus should be our best friend in life. I call you friend. I call you friends. The most trustworthy relationship you can have is with Christ Jesus. When your vertical relationship with the Lord is so strong, horizontal relationships around you become very easy to handle. People who cry before Christ will not need somebody's shoulders to cry on. Usually, usually. Sometimes you do, but usually you don't. People who talk everything to Christ usually don't require somebody else to hear you out so much. You require friends. We all require friends. In the name of being wise and careful, don't lead a lonely, miserable life. Have friends. It's all about how we handle it because the Bible has so much to talk about it. David and Jonathan were fantastic friends. And God used Jonathan in David's life to build him up to a certain extent. Even that friends who may be bad, God has a way of using them in your life for good, provided you learn to keep them at the right distance and in the right way. Don't allow any influence on you. Learn to influence them through the love of Christ. And don't feel important just because they take from you. Realize you are important even if they ignore you. Even if they don't appreciate you, you are important. Why? God created you with a purpose. Eyes are closed, heads are bowed. Let's say, Lord, this month of relationships, we really want to walk in healthy relationships, especially in our college days and our school days. Oh God, we want to be careful with the way we handle our friendships, that we don't allow social poor behavior to become contagious in our life, but that our lives we will live successfully, focused on what you have for us. Give us your grace, Lord. In this changing world where it's hard to keep friendships, in this individualistic world, help us to respect the concept of community. Help us to value relationships. We love you today, Master. We thank you today. In Jesus' holy name, Lord, we pray that anybody here who is struggling with loneliness, pray that they will learn the value of being friends with you. And through you, that they will have good friends 
who may be Christians, who may be believers, who may not be Christians, who may not be believers, but good friendships around us. Some who may be struggling and have no value-based friends. We pray that you will give them wisdom. Some who may be going through hurt and pain because they were let down by friends. We pray your healing will come upon them, Lord. Some who may be going through shame, who may be going through the trauma of broken relationships. We pray for your healing upon their hearts and minds. Hallelujah. Some who may have taken wrong decisions that hurt them, some who may have taken extreme decisions that hurt their own growth and their own prospects. Today we pray you will give them wisdom, you will give them strength to make right choices, to forgive themselves and to move on in your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some who may have lost faith, give them faith, Lord. Give them confidence, Father. We pray for healing on the hearts and minds. We pray for your healing touch. We thank you for your faithful. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and the people said, Amen. Go ahead, give the Lord a big hand, shall we? What a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heavens came down and glory filled my soul. My Savior made me whole My sins were washed away And my night was turned to day Heavens came down And glory Born of the Spirit with life from above into God's family divine Justified fully through Calvary's love Oh, what a standing is my Come on, church, let's do it Amen Thank you, Lord When as a sinner I came Took off the offer of grace He did proffer, He saved me My Savior made me whole My sins were washed away And my night was turned to day Heavens came down and glory filled my soul Now I have hope that will surely endure after the passing of time I have a future in heaven That's for sure There in those mansions Come on, let's clap our hands as we sing it And the thing was not that wonderful day When at the cross I believe Riches eternal and Amen his precious head I received Heavens came down and glory filled my soul When at the cross my Savior made me whole My sins were washed Yes.
so go ahead. It's our time to praise God. Go ahead. Hallelujah. 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 Give your best friend Jesus of our Lord the greatest hand of praise. Give your best friend Jesus of our Master the greatest shout of thanksgiving. Rededicate our hearts to Him in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Go ahead, church, lift up your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you so much for speaking to our hearts, O oh God, through your word. Thank you, God, that you give us, that you will give us wisdom in handling friendships and you will heal everything that is broken, oh God. Thank you for your word today. We pray that this week will be a blessed week with your grace, with your presence, oh God. Father, we pray for the newcomers today. We bless them. We pray for your touch on their lives, oh God. Today, thank you for speaking to their hearts, every questions, every curiosity, what they had in their heart, that you've spoken to them and you will bless them. May your favor be on them. Father, we pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays, their marriage anniversaries this week. We pray, Father God, for a blessed year ahead. We pray for greater things to achieve, oh God. And we pray for success over families, oh Father God. Father, we pray, Father, for those who are traveling this week. May your journey mercies go with them, protect them, keep them safe. Bring them back, oh God, with greater testimonies of your grace, oh God. We pray for your children as they're given their offerings and their tithes, oh God, with a heart of gratitude. We pray that you will bless them. You will give abundance to them, oh God. Honor them, Father. And for those who are struggling financially, we pray that this month you'll give them a breakthrough in their finances, oh God. God. Thank you once again. Father, we once again thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you for encouraging and strengthening our faith, O oh God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each one of us from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you just want to take a minute for the newcomers, all those who are here for the very first time. Can we put our hands together and welcome them? Thank you. As you walk out, there's a guest lounge. If you could go in there, there are a few people waiting to meet with you, talk to you. God bless you. Have a blessed week ahead. Bye-bye.